Warning, this video contains mature themes. Throughout history, serial killers have made lasting impressions due to their number of victims as well as their gruesome methods. From the Night Stalker to the Killer Clown, these are interesting facts on the most infamous serial killers America has ever seen. Number 10, Albert DeSalvo, the Boston Strangler. In 1962, Albert DeSalvo raped and strangled Anna Slessers with her housecoat and tied the ends into a bow, which became his trademark. Throughout that summer, he sexually assaulted and killed elderly women in Boston. By winter, he began attacking younger women, always leaving the rope he used to strangle the victims in a bow. Police dubbed him the Boston Strangler, but couldn't find a lead. Over the next couple of years, he murdered 13 women. On October 27, 1964, a stranger entered a young woman's home posing as a detective. He tied her to her bed, proceeded to sexually assault her, and suddenly left saying, I'm sorry, as he went. The woman's description of her attacker led police to identify DeSalvo and they quickly arrested him for his series of rapes. While under hypnosis, he gave a detailed confession of his previous activities as the Boston Strangler. The famed F. Lee Bailey took on his case and brought up the confessions as part of an insanity defense. But in the end, he was given a life sentence. DeSalvo was stabbed to death by a fellow inmate a few years later. Number 9. Angelo Buono and Kenneth Bianchi, the Hillside Strangler. In the late 1970s in Los Angeles, Angelo Buono convinced his cousin, Kenneth Bianchi, that they could become pimps and turn teenage runaways into income. They began by locking up two teenage girls in Buono's home. They beat the girls, pimped them, and raped them in a continuous cycle. Both women were able to successfully escape, but the next victim wasn't so lucky. The cousins dressed up as police officers, handcuffed a prostitute, and took her in their car. She was later tied up, violently raped, killed, and left on a hillside. Over the next four months, the hills of Los Angeles were littered with the bodies of 10 women and girls, aged 12 to 28, who had been raped, tortured, and murdered. Police eventually caught Bianchi, who confessed. More than 400 witnesses testified, and Buono was sentenced to life in prison with no parole. Bianchi had committed two more murders in Washington state and was therefore sentenced to six life sentences and remains imprisoned. Buono died of a heart attack while imprisoned in 2002. Number 8. Charles Ng and Leonard Lake. In 1982, Leonard Lake and Charles Ng were arrested by the FBI for firearm violations. Lake made bail and went to his ranch in California, turning it into a survivalist enclosure stocked with weapons. Upon Ng's release, he joined Lake at the cabin. Over the next couple of years, the friends tortured, raped, and murdered 25 people, including young children. They videotaped their torture sessions and documented them in journals. In June 1985, Ng was caught shoplifting. They returned to the store to pay for the item, but Lake raised suspicions when he provided an ID that belonged to a missing person. Ng fled the scene and Lake was arrested for possession of a 22 revolver illegally equipped with a silencer. While being interviewed at the police station, Lake swallowed a cyanide pill he had hidden in the lapel of his shirt. He left a suicide note that revealed their identities and confessed to their crimes. This ultimately led police to their property. Upon the arrival of the authorities, 12 bodies were found buried, as well as a bunker with a stash of weapons and 45 pounds of charred bone fragments. Ng was later caught and sentenced to death. He sits on death row to this day. Number 7. Dennis Rader, the BTK Killer. On January 15, 1974, three teenage siblings came home from school to find their parents and two youngest siblings had been brutally murdered in their Wichita, Kansas home. Four years later, a letter was sent to a local news station claiming responsibility not only for those murders, but for three others as well. The murderer suggested a nickname for himself. BTK standing for Bind, Torture, and Kill. In the years that followed, the BTA killer murdered three other people. He continued to send letters taunting the press and the police. In 2005, BTK sent the police a floppy disk with further instructions that he thought would be untraceable. Within the metadata of the disk, police found Christ Lutheran Church and Dennis. A quick search led them to Dennis Rader. They obtained a search warrant and were able to confirm a DNA match to the victims. He was quickly arrested. He eventually confessed to 10 murders in Wichita, Kansas, and is now serving 10 consecutive life sentences. Number 6. Gary Ridgway 
The Green River Killer. In 1982, young runaways and prostitutes began disappearing on Route 99 in King County, Washington. Gary Ridgway brought them to his home or in his truck, engaged in sexual activity with them, and after a few minutes of intercourse, he would strangle them. He'd then dump their bodies in the woods, usually nude and sometimes posed, along Green River and other areas near Seattle. Sometimes, he would return to the bodies and have sexual intercourse with them. Dub the Green River Killer, Ridgeway escaped the authorities for over 19 years until the King County Sheriff re-examined evidence using newly developed DNA testing. He eventually pleaded guilty to 49 counts of aggravated first-degree murder. Facing potential execution, Ridgeway made a deal to reveal the hidden bodies of young women. He was sentenced to life in prison in December of 2003, having committed more murders than any serial killer in U.S. history. Number 5. Richard Ramirez On June 20. 1984, a 79-year-old widow was sexually assaulted, stabbed, and killed during a burglary in her own home near Los Angeles, California. A spree of brutal murders, rapes, and robberies followed, leaving dozens of victims in the Night Stalker's wake. Richard Ramirez struck multiple times, raping, beating, and killing his victims, and leaving satanic symbols at the scene. In 1985, Ramirez was spotted outside a Mission Viejo, California home. The witness took note of his car and license plate and found a footprint. Later the same night, he raped a woman in her own home, shot her fiancé, and forced the victim to swear her love for Satan. A few days later, Ramirez's car was found abandoned, with enough of a fingerprint to make a match. His criminal record enabled the police to finally put a name to the Night Stalker. National media coverage led to Ramirez's capture on August 31st, after he was badly beaten while attempting a carjacking. He began trial in 1989 and was convicted of 13 counts of murder, 5 attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. He was sentenced to death two months later. Ramirez died from complications of cancer while on death row. Number 4. John Wayne Gacy In 1978, a teenage boy was reported missing in Chicago, Illinois. Police learned that the teenager was last seen with John Wayne Gacy a member of the Jolly Joker Clown Club who frequently performed as a clown at children's parties. After obtaining a search warrant, police noticed a strong stench coming from the crawl space of his home. They were able to find several items linking Gacy to the young victim. After Gacy confessed, investigators discovered the bodies of 33 boys and young men in and around Gacy's house. In March 1980, Gacy was found guilty of all 33 sex-related murders and was given the death penalty. He spent 14 years on death row painting clowns which he sold for thousands of dollars, earning him the nickname Killer Clown. He was later executed by lethal injection in 1994. Number 3. Jeffrey Dahmer in 1978, just three weeks after graduating high school in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 18-year-old Jeffrey Dahmer picked up hitchhiker Stephen Hicks and offered to take him back to his house to drink beer. When Hicks decided to leave, Dahmer got upset because he wanted him to stay. He hit him over the head, then dissected, dissolved, pulverized, and scattered his remains throughout his backyard. Over the next 12 years, Dahmer raped, dismembered, and cannibalized 17 males. In 1991, Dahmer lured Tracy Edwards into his home by offering to pay him cash to hang out. Dahmer forced Edwards into the bedroom with a knife. Edwards was able to escape and flag down a police car. Upon entering the bedroom, police found pictures of dead bodies and dismembered remains throughout the apartment, including four heads and seven skulls. Dahmer was sentenced to 15 life terms and was later killed in prison by a fellow inmate. Number 2. Ted Bundy On February 1, 1974, University of Washington student Linda Ann Healy disappeared from her apartment and was killed. Over the next few months, seven years young women in Washington were attacked. All of the victims looked strikingly similar with long, dark hair parted in the middle. Those who knew the murderer, Ted Bundy, said he used his charm to pick up his victims, then he would rape and kill them. In 1975, he was arrested in Colorado as he was on the hunt for another victim. He was charged with murder but managed to escape from the window of the courthouse. Eight days later, he was finally caught, only to escape again while awaiting trial. Bundy settled in Florida, and on January 15, 1978, he broke into the 
Chi Omega sorority house at Florida State University, killing Margaret Bauman and Lisa Levy and assaulting two others. The same night, he went down the street and assaulted Cheryl Thomas in her apartment. A few weeks later, while still on the run, he abducted and killed 12-year-old Kimberly Diane Leach. Days later, he was arrested while driving a stolen car. The evidence was overwhelming, including teeth marks on one of his victims. Bundy was sentenced to death. He eventually confessed to 36 murders and was executed on January 24th, 1989, where hundreds of people came to cheer for justice. Number 1. The Zodiac Killer In July of 1969, the San Francisco Examiner newspaper received a letter containing a coded message that said, I like killing people because it's so much fun. The message was sent by the Zodiac, a serial killer who terrorized Northern California with grisly murders and bizarre ciphers full of threats and demands. For approximately 10 years, he continued to send nearly two dozen letters to the newspaper. In them, he mocked police for failing to catch him, threatened children with bombs, and bragged about killing at least 37 victims. Then, all of a sudden, in the late 1970s, he vanished. Law enforcement has tried to uncover his identity for over five decades with no success. His story has inspired three real-life copycat killers. After reviewing more than 2,500 suspects with fingerprint and DNA tests, no one was ever positively identified. Arthur Lee Allen was the prime suspect, but tests were inconclusive, and he died in 1992. No other serial killer in history was able to completely elude police and toy with them, like the Zodiac Killer. Do you know of a serial killer that didn't make our list? Tell us about it in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. New videos are uploaded every week. Until next time, thanks for watching Best Top 5s.